All right, for Jesus, I'm pouring everybody from here. And then, if I went the right one. Let's see, uh, what do we do on me today? Um, Praise Jesus. Jesus, Lord. Jesus, Lord, thank you. Sound is good over there. Let me see if I... Uh, uh, it's, oh, perfect. Hold on. Look like I'm seeing the chat both areas. And... Right, so I want to keep our time. So I think we are right at eight o'clock. So all right, thank you, Jesus. We're right at eight o'clock. We will begin our Bible study for today. Thank you, Jesus, and those of you who are here with me right now. We make sure there's nobody working in the work room. I want them to miss the prayer if they're here on time, ready to pray. If not, for those of you who are already connected with us, let's go ahead and pray really quickly. Bow your heads with me. Uh, Jesus, we thank you for how you did die for us, how on the third day, uh, after being, after dying on that cross, on the third day, being in that grave, you rose again with all power. And Jesus, we thank you today. We ask Jesus today that you might uh, touch us even right now, that you might uh, uh, break up our fallow ground, that you might remove anything that needs to be removed, pluck anything that needs to be plucked, plant anything that needs to be planted. Let us need to be bearing on fruitful concerning your word, but have your way, Jesus. We ask you to saturate all of our areas, that you might be glorified. Let your fruit be seen, let your glory be had, and let your name be lifted up. Jesus, we thank you in advance for already doing it. We thank Thank you in advance for your peace, and we thank you in advance for answering and meeting every need. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we will proceed. Did I get them in? Hold on. Get it off. Okay. All right, we got a couple more coming right now. Those of you who know our Bible study uh, topic, subject matter for this week is going to be coming out of Luke, uh, the Gospel according to Luke, chapter number 17, and I believe verses number 20. Uh, through verse number 32. Again, that's Luke chapter uh, number 17, verses number 20 through verses number 32. And we'll, um, so as I, I'm going to go through uh, very quickly reading that scripture, uh, scriptural text for today, and then I want you to, um, uh, you can, uh, we'll, I'll start taking questions immediately following. Uh, excuse me. Uh, also, keep in mind, we're going to, um, your, um, your um, questions can be uh, the, the subject matter of the text is just simply uh, to give us our subject and your, um, your questions can come from uh, anywhere as long as it's uh, on subject with our text. Amen. Okay. And the Bible reads uh, Luke 17 and King James Version verses 20 um, through verse uh, number 32. Uh, and when he, uh, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And ye shall say to, and, and they shall say to you, see there or see there, or see there. See here or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For the lightning that lighteth out of one part of under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of his of, his, of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold. They planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went into the went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man will be. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him let him likewise not return back. And verse thirty two says, "Remember Lot's wife." Amen. Okay. Let's see. Is uh. 
My audio is good. Everybody can hear me okay? Are we having some trouble here? Um, it should be good on my mic. Uh, it should be good on my sound. Okay. Anybody have any trouble hearing or if there's something uh, I'm not coming through clearly, please feel free. Uh, raise your hand, send me a note, message, whatever we need to do so I can know. Uh, but uh, we should be good to go. Okay. Now, uh, this, I feel like uh, this particular subject matter we have here is a gospel according to Luke chapter 17. It um, it uh, is uh, uh, it's deep uh, because in this time we live in, uh, everybody um, seems to know the way, have the way, or um, Jesus. Everybody's convinced of their own righteousness, and so uh, when you're convinced of your own righteousness, um, you uh, tend to uh, we tend to give uh, people directions to the way. Lo, there is the kingdom. Here is the kingdom. Um, Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, so what I want to do is now, so if anybody has a question before I get in the, get to going, um, too good. Um, I'll take questions. Um, let's see if we have any to start. And if we do. I think that, um, uh, well, if, if we don't have any yet, I got one. I got a, uh, Jesus says this right here in, he said, um, uh, um, he said exactly where is the kingdom, where the kingdom is. And so it's interesting. Uh, so uh, my question is, where is the kingdom? He says, uh, don't be fooled this way. Don't be fooled that way. Uh, we have to understand at this time, whether it be the Bible said, uh, so many different Jesus, unless they preach to you another Jesus, having the form of God, all these other things that are not really Jesus. We got to know that we got Jesus in us. He said, don't listen to that because the kingdom dwelleth in you. It's a hard fight when everything outside is uh, trying to pull you and you got to lean on what's inside. So greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world uh, because there's such a struggle on the outside. Jesus the Bible said in the book of Hebrews, we have not, uh, was this such a contradiction of sinners? There's so much stuff going on the outside, uh, but we got Jesus going on the inside. So, uh, and in and in real terms, it's, uh, um, we break it down uh, to most times people talk and they talk about it's either, you know, it's, a, it's either heaven or hell, but Jesus is talking about now the kingdom. Uh, um, he told the rich young ruler, if you want to get, if you're actually trying to get into the kingdom. So when we start talking kingdom, it's a different talk because um, we equate heaven or hell and we just make it good or bad. And that's not how the kingdom works. And so they think that they can work their way, find their way, see their way into the kingdom. But the kingdom comes not by observation. You ain't going to be able to search it out, find it out. It has to be in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um it's uh it's uh it's even weird because we get into and I'm talking about we when I say we mean the church people. Okay, we got a hand up. All right, sister charity, you wanna you can you can turn your mic on if you like. Sister Charity, let's see. Or is it working? I don't know why it's not on you. Bridges, are we frozen? Can you hear me? I can hear Bridges, you. Bridges. Jesus okay. Lord, okay. I am frozen. Okay, Bishop. So oftentimes, I, like, I've heard, like, so you can look back to see how far you've gone, you've come. Um, what did, Lot, when Lot's wife looked back, why was it, like, like why would she turn like turn to stone? Like what is the like not looking back to want something from the past, 
but is it okay? Like, is it okay to look back to just literally to like just to see how far you come? Or like, yeah, that that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, and that, and that is absolutely so. So, Lot Wife obviously paid a very very high price, and you're absolutely right in the reality of things. Just looking back, taking a little, taking taking the last look, if you will. Uh, but then the Bible says, "No man looking back is fit for the kingdom." What happens is, is that oftentimes, um, just like with Lot's wife, when you're looking back, it's, you're not fit for where you're going. So, even when we look back, just like Lot's wife, oftentimes we're looking back for the good part because we missed the struggle part. All the people that died, all the you know brimstones falling on the city. Uh, they were they were uh, full of, uh, of uh, sin and impurity and all this other kind of stuff and. Uh, um, and so we look back on our memories in the most fondest way, oftentimes. And so we romanticize, we make them better than what it was. We don't, uh, we don't see the hard times when we were struggling, and, and, and the devil uh, tried to kill us. When you look back, you look on the fine times. It was fun. We had this. We had that. Oh, I remember we used to do this. We used to laugh. Well, we also used to fight. We also. So when Lot's wife turns back and look, she looks for that final glance. But the problem is not with her looking back. The problem is with her not looking forward. So as soon as she looks back, she now acknowledges the fact that she's not ready to go where she's going. And it would be, and, and so um, the instruction was don't look back. So now had she not had the instructions not to look back, uh, I believe she would have been fine. But because her instructions were don't look back. Now she's got to be led by the word. She has to follow the instruction because that's the only way she's going to be situated for where she was going. And so, and 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 so, when we finally uh, mature enough uh, uh, and grow enough in grace, it means that we get enough mature to know that that um, uh, that we are now fit for and it's, and the Bible uses fit for the kingdom of God. Uh, that we're that we're fit for the kingdom. We're ready to go where he's going. I want to be wherever Jesus is. And so uh, uh, whatever that is, that's done. Whatever that is, that was over. Uh, good days and bad days. And I guess that's the other part. I mean, uh, you got to release all the days. You can't just release the, you can't just release the bad days. And so, and, and it's, it's human nature to see everything in good and bad. And you, and it would be ridiculous to believe that somehow uh, you had all these uh, days. You only had bad days. No, no, no. Not a good day. Um, there's a reason why the devil is so effective. Because all days aren't bad days. The devil's not even trying to give you bad days. What he's trying to do is make sure you don't get no Jesus days. So when we stop looking at it in good and bad and start looking at it in in our in, in purpose and in calling and in assignment, and then then we get then we get effective. Because it wasn't about uh, where she was coming from, it was about where she was going. And so, and, and so she has to know that where she's going is better than what she's leaving behind. Uh, uh, that the best is yet to come. I believe that. We got any, any other? That's a wonderful question. Thank you for it. That's a wonderful, wonderful question. So our first question of this Bible study. <coughs> Hmm. Okay, that's and that's a another point about the um, um, Lot's wife. So when Lot left out of the city uh, of Sodom and Gomorrah, first of all, um, you have to understand the uh, the the beauty of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, I'll try to do a quick uh, a little quick history lesson. So Lot is the nephew of Abraham. Uh, Lot and Abraham were together and they were uh, under the promise of God and Lot was with Abraham and, and Lot flocked, the Bible said, had got so big, it was as big as Abraham. So as rich as they say that Abraham is, and, and, uh, uh, as much as they said that uh, Abraham had, Lot had equal amount. He had so much that he said, it's too, it's, it's too much. Uh, my stuff is big as your stuff. We can't keep rolling together. So Lot sees the city on Sodom and Gomorrah, and he said, "It looks like the promise. It looks so good. I know it's not. Uh, I know it's not the uh, the one that he said uh, milk and honey. We got to split up." And so Abraham permitted Lot to come to the city. So when Lot came to the city, he was already looking for bigger, better uh, living. He was looking for that kind of peace. Well, the inhabitants of the city uh, were not uh, followers of God. So when the angel of the Lord came uh, to the city and said, "Lot, look, 
uh, the Lord's judge the city. Uh, and then, so Lot began to Lot began to beg and reason with the angel of the Lord and say, go back and ask if he, uh, how many people have to be righteous to save the city because uh, he loved the city. I'm saying that to say Lot loved the city, so did Lot's wife, who we just call Lot's wife. So if we believe that Lot loved the city, we're going to also believe Lot's wife loved the city. They did not want to leave this city so much so uh, they were willing to give up their own children. They wanted to stay in the city. They wanted to be in the city. It was it was a it was a, a good time. What I'm saying is it wasn't all bad, and that's kind of where we find ourselves in that kind of city. It wasn't all bad. They liked the city. Lot had a good house. Lot had plenty of money. Lot had a uh, lot was doing very well. He he didn't want to leave. If if it was bad for Lot, all bad, he would have ran out of there. But no, he said no. Let's let's. Let's, let's not be too hasty. Ask God again. Let's save the city. We got 10 people. 10 people are spared the city. Five people, five people are spared the city. <laughs> but they couldn't find it. So, do we have any more questions? And let me scout on over. Thank you, Sfori. Thank you, Sfori. Let me scout on over to you. Uh, to... Okay, we got some. Let's see. I don't. Uh, okay, I got a, we got a question over on YouTube. Let me see if I got I got the, I got it today. Uh, uh, how do we deal with people who say they they are excuse me, that they are religious but they don't go to church? How do we approach them? Jesus name. Okay, good question. Good question. We have to um, we have to first of all. Um, the Bible said, if you see your brother overtaking the fault, you which are spiritual and restore such a one, consider your own self. We, uh, the only way we have to, the only way we can deal with people that think they're religious is check our religion and our pride at the door. Uh, Jesus said the first thing you got to do in order to follow him is deny yourself. And so the issue that we always got is that sometimes I know people are wrong. And when I know they're wrong, it is my nature to want to show them how they're wrong because I know that what I'm saying is right. But I'm not called to do any of those things. That's not really what I'm called to do. And so we as people get so caught up in wanting to show them, show them that they're wrong. We're not called to show them that they're wrong. We're called to show them what is right. So we just show them that Jesus is what? He's the light. He's the salt. He's the way. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. So we're called to show them something different. Uh, uh, Enoch told Philip, how can I know unless some man, some person show me? And so we uh, have to check ourselves enough to know uh, that we have to show them. Paul said, I became all things to all men that I might save one. Uh, we have to get to the place to where we're showing and not so much debating, not so much talking, not so much trying to prove people wrong. Because it's easy uh, and, and you get, you. you know, I mean, it's, it's not hard to get to see these people um, uh, and getting uh, church debate or whatever you want to call it, uh, Bible wars and all this other stuff. And they... Uh, uh, and most of it is not, uh, most of it is not, well, none of it edifies, but also uh, it's, it's, it doesn't edify, it's, it doesn't build the kingdom, and all it does is uh, cause discord and confusion, because Jesus never came to tell them, he came to show them, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. See, it, 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 you had to show him if, if um, if 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 it, if it wasn't necessary to be showed, then Jesus could have just told it. They could have just uh, he could have just rumbled it. He could have just wrote it down. He could have just no. But he he loved us so much that uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's how good Jesus is. To us. We have to operate in that same meekness, that same spirit that Jesus operated in, that allowed them uh, uh, to say what they wanted to say. And Jesus showed them. You can't get more religious than the Sadducees and Pharisees. And they were on Jesus' neck every single day. Good question. Good question. We got any more? Any more questions? Let me get back over here to Zoom. See if we got anything. Okay. All right. I don't see if anybody got anything else. Now we got two weeks. Anybody got a whole lot of life happening in two weeks? And then when when they say um, the Bible said he's Jesus said they say lo here is the kingdom or there is the kingdom, uh, we are always trying to tell people uh, what is church and what is Jesus and what it we can't tell them that well, lo he said the kingdom is within you, 
if you don't have Jesus in you, um, uh, it doesn't matter. People want to uh, come up with a form of Jesus, a, a, a similitude of him, something like him. It's always been the problem that you got to have Jesus for yourself. We've been taught that. We understand that. But when somebody tries to get you just to act like him, talk like him, and try to mimic him, that don't work. You got to have him. You have to receive him. Uh, he has to make his abode in you. He is Emmanuel. He tabernacles with you. He, he lives in you. And that means the kingdom is in you. When Jesus comes back, he's coming back to call, call a church uh, without spot or blemish. What is he calling back? He, he ain't calling John and Jimmy. He, one, one church, one body, uh, one word, or one anointed, one spirit, one name. So when he comes back, he's going to call Jesus. And everybody who got Jesus in him, in them, my sheep hear my voice. They ain't going to be able to help themselves. Uh, uh, that's how that works. Wonderful question. Wonderful, wonderful. Hold on, man. I'm just jumping around a little bit, y'all. If, uh, if it were that we, we seen, uh, um, so, um, there is some um, uh, reconciliation uh, that goes on um, that uh, um, in the Bible that we we have to we're forced to reconcile. Here's what I'm saying: uh, we you you talking about Lot and we're talking about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and you even say in the days of Noah. Uh, in the days of Noah, uh, uh, flooded the, the earth was flooded for forty days and forty nights, and uh, there hadn't been rain. So when, when the earth was flooded, uh, here's the thing. Everything that was not in the ark was destroyed. Um, so and uh, in the days of Lot, everybody in the city, the, uh, the angels took out Lot, his wife, his daughters. They left the city. Everybody else that was in that city, Sodom and Gomorrah, was destroyed, uh, fire and brimstone. So when we try to reconcile the idea of, of this thing uh, that... Uh, uh, this 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 um uh, de the decision or the judgment of God that would cause them to be destroyed. We'd see all this killing in the news and killing. So this killing that happens, where is the kingdom inside the killing? Well, on the other side of the Old Testament, you got uh, they were they were under the law, and Jesus said they were under the law. So in the law, you see how abrupt the law is. It was right and wrong. It was you in or you out. It was a. Uh, 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 Jacob have I love, but Esau I hate. It was just that simple. It was uh, either live by the commandments or die by the commandments. And that's where it was. Then Jesus came into the world because we couldn't live like that. And we got now this grace. And so now uh, we operate in enough grace to be able to, uh, dare I say, um, get away with some stuff. Uh, Paul says it in uh, Paul writes and says it this way. He says, shall we continue to sin? So grace should abide. God forbid. When we start talking real church talk, we really should talk about the stuff that we're allowed to get away with because grace covers us. And then, then what do we do now that we're covered? So fire and brimstone didn't rain down. That don't mean that we ain't doing some of the same stuff that they were doing inside of Angle more. So Paul said there takes something else. For you, uh, we start getting into the following after this, so we might enter into the kingdom kind of thing, and then uh, uh, we we start understanding that uh, we uh, value grace enough not to frustrate grace and not to continue to do stuff just because we know we can get away with stuff. It's a little different way of, uh, but we found out so that. that the enter into the holiest of holies, you couldn't even get in there. You had to be the high priest. And so Jesus tore the veil of the temple in two, and now we can get the access to where we uh, shouldn't get access. And so we can come boldly to the throne of grace right there to the mercy seat. We can come boldly to the throne of grace, obtain mercy, and find grace help in our time of need. That means that you can come with dirty hands. Now, you should want not to come with dirty hands, but you can come with dirty hands. And so uh, when we start talking about uh, that, we start changing kind of what we do. So um, Lot's wife was under the word of the law or the word of the Lord, which said, uh, don't look back. When you leave the city, walk out, 
I got a plan for you. I got a place for you. Follow the angel out the city and don't look back. She was compelled to look back because they didn't say don't look back and you're going to turn into a pillar of salt. Don't look back and you're going to die. Don't look back and you, uh, you're you going to suffer destruction. It just simply said, don't look back. That's the word. That's the word. And if we were held under that same kind of strict ordinance, where if you just were underneath from word to consequence, you wouldn't survive. But you got this thing called grace. And so it means that, yes, you might have messed up. And some people seen you do some stuff and you did some stuff that wasn't Jesus, some stuff that did not uh, do the kingdom. Matter of fact, we said a lot of stuff that we shouldn't have said. You come then to this altar and you find place for forgiveness. And Jesus washes the way you're seeing white as snow. And who wouldn't serve a guy like this? He's just good like that. Y'all don't make me preach in here. Come on with the question. We got any more questions? <laughs> we got any more? We got, let's see. We got anything on it. We got any more questions. Got quiet tonight. We all right, though. We doing, let's see, we, we doing pretty good on our time. So that's wonderful. Let's get back into the, uh, uh, in verse 21, um, when uh, Jesus said, neither shall they say low here or low there, uh, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Uh, he said, neither uh, will they, neither shall they say, who is they? They is us. You ain't going to find it in a building. You ain't going to find it in Jerusalem. You ain't going to find it in the Red Sea. You ain't going to find it in the Jordan. You're not going to find it in the Middle East. You ain't going to find it in uh, in, uh, in the Torah. You ain't going to find it in, uh, in uh, Pentateuch. Pentateuch. You ain't going to find it in the Quran. You ain't going to find it because the kingdom has to be in you. And if it ain't in you, you're not going to find it outside of you. And uh, it means something because uh, sometimes you have to remind yourself. And I mean, remind yourself that we'll be out here searching for uh, the kingdom, uh, a place that can press us into the kingdom, a person that can give us word that'll allow us to enter into the kingdom. He said, don't listen to none of that. Don't even listen to yourself. The kingdom has to be in. And he said, when they say, when they say uh, it's here or there, he said, don't go after it. He said, don't even, don't even think about going after it. Hold on to it. That's messed up in Detroit. He said, don't even think about going after it because the kingdom, the kingdom is right there. It's within you. We got question, comment, or further, illum further illumination on the question. Now, give me one second. Give me come back. All right, for you to everybody who came in, you came in late. We got questions. We're taking questions and answers. We're in Luke 17, uh, verses 20 through verse number 32. Uh, See, we got nobody in the waiting room. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And um, I uh, I heard a debate, I um, listened to a debate earlier, and they were talking about how um, we have not made uh, uh, the gospel contemporary. It's not accessible enough because we're not having the conversations. Uh, we're not doing the things that we need to do to make the um, people, especially young people, uh, feel safe enough to enter into uh, the church because we don't uh, meet them where they're at. And, uh, and, and here's my only issue. I don't have any problem uh, being contemporary and I don't have any problem meeting somebody where they're at. Here's my only issue. If someone ever tries to preach to you another Jesus, there are certain things that Jesus cannot do. And he, uh, he's, he's love all the time, so he got to be there all the time. He's going to move in compassion because that's how he operates. That is how he moves. He, uh, uh, he, uh, he only, uh, he abides in faith and faith is how you get it. That, that, that's just who he is. So I know those things to be true. And so you can, um, what, what I'm saying is 
what he does, he's so good at what he does, he doesn't have to dumb it down. Uh, I'm saying that to say uh, the kingdom is in you. So if you become welcoming, then they're welcome to the kingdom. Um, Jesus, when he sent them out into the house, the 70, sent them out in, uh, in twos, and they were going to the house, and Jesus said, when you get to the house, listen to what you do. Uh, let your peace abide in the house, because uh, when they accept you, listen to what came to you, the kingdom comes with you, and then tell them, uh, when you when you let your peace abide in the house, they'll have you, if they'll receive you, if they'll accept you, so that's the goal. You're trying to get, you're trying to get in, because when you get in, guess who comes? Jesus comes with you, and so uh, he said, let your peace abide on the house, and then tell them, the kingdom of God is at hand. What? There's the, the when, when you show up and you got that Jesus with you, the kingdom shows up. And so it is to be acceptable. Um, uh, Paul said, I became all things to all men. Don't understand now. I'll do whatever I got to do, but I ain't changing my Jesus for nobody. He's going to be the same today, yesterday, evermore. See, you let me in the house and Jesus come with me. Uh, now you say, oh, uh, 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 you dirty, I make myself appear to be as you are so I can get into the house. But when I get into the house, the same Jesus. That's what he's saying. So, and I think I think that um uh, I think that in order uh they took a uh sometime we take a detour, uh I'm saying in search of the kingdom. And uh and we go after it in a way that is not uh is not really uh congruent with the word. So I'm uh, I'm very interested in if anybody, so and I don't want to, and y'all got me just talking now. So if <laughs> I, I don't want to, I want this to be, a, I want to have a, a open dialogue here. So if there's anything else and also, um, okay, wait a minute. All right, we got a, uh, Somebody said, I think the issue is with bringing in younger generations and the change of the word and the way they interpret it. I find it's not taught the same way it was when we were growing up. Um, uh, I I can agree with that. Uh, you know, there's a there's a whole uh, thing about uh, one of the things that that is uh, common to talk about is how the music changed. And what uh, what would be worldly one time? And I'm not even talking. I'm not talking about the word. I'm talking about just just the beat, just the instrumentation, just the things that we do to bring the music. And people, oh, you're not supposed to have the music with the word. You're not supposed to, and then play with the skill and all this other stuff uh, that um, that uh, has changed. Uh, it absolutely has changed. Uh, we got uh, we got gospel rap. We got gospel R and B. We got gospel. I mean, so it's changed. These things that wouldn't be allowed. And we got gospel dance. We got praise dance. We got praise and worship teams. So uh, all these things change. Um, uh, they change and and they change to um, adapt to a to the climate that's around. You. And, and here's my only thing: you ain't gonna see me push over no praise dances. I ain't knocking over no bet, whatever they call flag. Uh, the flag worshipers, our, our moms, and none of that. Here's the thing: Jesus has to be the same. Uh, whether uh, and uh, the Bible talking about playing it with the skilled hand, the, the harp, or the uh, psaltery, or the whatever you play, whatever you're doing, Jesus has to be glorified. How do I know that it's Jesus? Jesus has to be in it. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we got to make sure that uh, that when we become uh, we're trying to reach young people. You can reach young people. Use their language. Talk what they talk. Because like I told you, that's fine. You just, that's you. That's you um, uh, becoming all things, all men. But Jesus don't become nothing. Jesus is going to be the same. So uh, I can give you, I can give you my interpretation of the words of the Bible. I can tell you in layman's terms or how I interpret it and read and, and in these words, and I can give you, I can give it to you as a, uh, as common as I as I know how, in the same conversational tone that we use to talk. However, uh, when it comes to Jesus and the representation of Him that is in me, coming out of me, uh, it got to flow, and it got to flow the same. Because if I alter it, touch it in any way, I messed up. Uh, as you have received the gift, so ministry you need the same gift one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That's what we got to give. So when we so so what we use to give them, that's how I don't get. That none of that bothers me. All that, what bothers me is, is uh, when somebody tries to then preach another Jesus 
when Jesus start doing stuff, when, when they say that Jesus does stuff, because he doesn't start doing stuff, when they say that Jesus is doing things that Jesus cannot do, will not do. Uh, when they start saying, well, he was doing this, but now he's doing No, no, no. His word cannot come back to him void. If he said it, he got to do it. It's impossible for him to lie. Uh, Bible said his word is so, his word is so good, even he can't reverse it. All right, we got another, we, I think. Um, so, uh, and, and, and so what I'm saying is, yes, it's, it's different than, than right now than, than it was 20 years ago and 20 years before that and a generation before that. And it's going to continue to be different, but Jesus has to be the same. Jesus, uh, Peter told him the same Jesus who you crucified. It got to be that same Jesus. And so that's, that's where we have to work to get ourselves in check. Uh, because in order for Jesus to be personified, you got to decrease so he can increase. You got to first deny yourself. I mean, and then we can get them the same Jesus. And if you and if you want to tap dance, and then at the end of your tap dance, it's the same Jesus. The same Jesus is the important part. You are the insignificant component of that. Um, uh, but Jesus is the same day, yesterday, and forevermore. He is God. He changes not. Yes. And there, uh, the, so. Here's what I love about when they talk about Jesus. Not only he, he changed not, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, but even more than that, in him, the Bible said, is neither any variableness, nor is there any shadow of him turned to complete how great our God he is, his omniscience, his omnipresence, his omnipotent, uh, 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 to know that he's everywhere in all things, he can do all things, but here, uh, there in him, there is no variableness. That means no matter how I try to put together equations, you know, an algebraic equation, X represents the unknown. Uh, no matter what I try to fill in that X with, uh, Jesus is the same. So no matter how sick you are, or how bad your situation is, or how you were raised, or how bad your life was, or who your parents are, or the people you know, or what bad, how bad your situation is, no matter how bad the devil tried to attack you, or no matter how bad your struggle is, Jesus, is, there is no variableness in him. He's the same. He loves you the same, nor is there any shadow of him turning. He ain't moved not one inch and not one, uh, not one millimeter. He's the same. Okay, uh, let's see. We got another one. We get, we getting them now. Also, sounds like many people want to be empowered instead of convicted. Uh, so I noticed uh, some of the bigger churches uh, show the empower uh, to empower the people. Uh, to be okay with making their bad decisions sin. Absolutely. So one of the things is, is the Bible said that in these last evil days, I have a delusion will fall and men, men would be lovers of themselves. Uh, they would uh, they would have itchy ears, only desiring things uh, that can consume their own lust. So when you put on the Lord Jesus, you make provision for the flesh not to fulfill the lust thereof. And so if we don't do that, Let's run that in reverse. We don't put on the Lord Jesus. Everything we do is about us. And you'll watch yourself. And I'm not talking about the Jesus you. I'm not talking about the Jesus that dwells in you. I ain't even talking about the king. I'm talking about the you, you. Your flesh is then affected by the things of this world. And so if it is a heightened sense of self, you also operate in a heightened sense of self. But in order for you to follow Jesus, it don't matter what you operate in this in the world. You first thing you do is then deny yourself. And so we are absolutely in a time where they are trying to uh, convince people and pervert the gospel in a way to let them think that they can just give Jesus anything. No, he's the same. Now, you can uh, you uh, can understand that Jesus loves you as you are. But when you understand who he is. We love him because he first loved us. When I understand who he is, I then change what I give to him. Because uh, Jesus uh, died for you so that you might live for him. And so I think that we, they, they miss the error. And so everything becomes, how can we, how can we have Jesus accompany? Uh, the Sadducees and Pharisees were going to be fine with Jesus as long as he fell in line. But when Jesus started doing stuff and accepting people and things that were not in line with what they were comfortable with, that was that's when it was a problem. They were comfortable with it um, as long as Jesus would do. And that's all they were trying to do. Oh, here, you know what the Bible said? You know what Moses said? You know what Abraham said? The book says this. You should be doing And if he had a fell in line, they would have been all good. If he played the game, it would have been all good. But he didn't want to play the game. He didn't fall in line. He said, uh, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I come to change the whole game. This is going to all be different. And so he said, I come to, you know, this, this stuff, you, you if you uh, operate this way, you're going to be a servant of sin. 
And so if we are all in a place where we're serving sin, instead of us getting covered by Jesus, that we might get our, get our sins covered. Don't mean all sin and fall short. I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if we don't give that stuff to Jesus, what we'll do is we'll make excuse for it. We'll make provision for the flesh. And that's all that's going on now, uh, that everyone on a mass scale is making provision for the flesh because we understand that Jesus' grace is sufficient. That means there's some stuff, and I'm going to say this as clear as I can, that you found out you can get away with. And he ain't, and fire and brimstone didn't come down. And, and the church grow by 5,000 people, you know. So um, let's see. Uh, we got another one. Six there. So true. Uh, this is happening more and more, and it's leading people to become uh, less uh, lost, especially the new generation. Um, they are. Um, uh, how can they hear uh, without a word, without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? So what happens is that we can we have now um, decided. Uh, that preaching only comes from the pulpit and that preacher only comes from uh, the actual preacher. But no, we're all preaching the word. We're ministering the word. Our life is our ministry. And so what happens is that we are now allowing people to believe something that's not Jesus because we're not giving account of our message. So it's one thing to understand that there's somebody over there on the pulpit that's talking to 30,000 people and he got to be accountable. You can't say that. You can't do that. You can't lead them that way. But we got to understand with the five people that we got to live in our house, we still have the same level of accountability because the soul is the soul. So much as you've done to the least one of these, you've done it also to me. And so I think that the church of Jesus uh, the church that is of and is and is Jesus has to uh, has to take accountability for the message that we're preaching because uh, judgment must first begin at the house of God. And so I know uh, that it's definitely people being lost out there. But what accountability do we have for the law? Jesus said, uh, "Behold, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers there be a few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest might send forth laborers into his harvest." We got to be the people that see it and know that only what you do for Jesus is gonna last. That Jesus is the best thing, and we have to live that. And personify that so somebody else can see it. And so that uh, we have to be moved with compassion when we're seeing all these people lost. That's what Jesus did. He said they would, he said they lost the sheep having no shepherd, and he would move with compassion. And so if we're like Jesus, if he's dwelling in us, if that's what we're living through and for and by, then that's how we have to operate. That's wonderful. Uh they changed the Bible to speak to this generation. It sounds hard. It absolutely see, and what, what happens is, is that um what happens is, is that uh uh, the Bible said that heaven and earth can pass away, but not one giant, not one tittle, the law shall fail. Um, but um, um, we, we've decided that um, that we can modify. And that's and do you understand that even when uh, even when they decided they wanted to put this Bible, the King James Version, this Bible together, and they decided that they wanted to get it um, to a way that it could be uh, palatable. And so whenever it comes to Jesus, we want to make him palatable. But Jesus said, I come to cause a fire in the earth, meaning it ain't palatable, but it's effective. Uh, it, it, it don't always go down that smooth because when Jesus finds you, he finds you in your sin. But guess what? He gives you beauty for ashes. So it becomes uh, it, it's it, it's not often and, and nobody wants to hear or, or see uh, that they're wrong. But Jesus can handle you in your wrong and still love you and treat you uh, with compassion. And so that's why we love him so. And so when people start seeing that Jesus can handle them like that, they'll stop covering up their wrong and they'll bring it to Jesus. That's what we learned. We learned we can bring it into the altar and raggedy as we are and messed up as we are. What if somebody else would could see that through you, that Jesus loved like that, uh, that he loved so much that he's not about you trying to fake or fix or trying to cover, just bring it to him. And he'll love you and he'll handle you and he'll treat you compassionately and you'll find mercy and grace right there at the altar. That's how much Jesus loves you. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, oh, they uh, deleted. I, I wasn't aware of this. They deleted Matthew 17 and 21 out of the new version of the Bible. I'm not sure what version that is. Um, uh, um, it is a. Um, um, the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the mighty, mighty through God for tearing down, tearing down uh, this spiritual witness. But what we don't, what we, what we want to do, and I, and, and we have to do this in ourselves. This is why the, you have to tear it down in yourself first. You cannot give anything you don't have. And so, and the Bible, that's why the Bible says, "You spiritual, consider yourself." Uh, so, 
when we're tearing down, uh, we have to understand that we, we want to do everything on such a grand scale. Uh, and so we want to tear down Satan's kingdom. Absolutely. I agree. Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Uh, the Bible said, for this reason, what the Son of Man has manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, guess what? That doesn't have to in that. We automatically jump to grand scale. But what about just destroying the works in your day right now? Destroying the works on that job. Destroying the works right there in your house. We're going to do whatever the devil's doing. It's not going to work because wherever the devil is interceded or where he don't work, that means Jesus get the glory because uh, the Bible said that if you, you, you have to trust Jesus, you have to lean on him and then you can resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. So we're just allowing Jesus to manifest in a way that then breaks some of the stuff. And then when they're wondering, or, or, or the, the question then becomes, how can you be in the same place but operate under a different mantle? It must have been. It had to be. It was Jesus. And so it doesn't matter what they take out because, lo, the kingdom is in you. And so they're going to always, and they're being the world. That's what the world wants. The world, uh, the world um, rejected him, and they're going to always reject him. And that's why he said, you got to one, you got to be careful because if the world love you, but they hate him, then how can you be fully representative of him? So we want to give them, uh, we don't even want to give them, uh, uh, this is called the Gen Z Bible. Okay, but we don't even want to get in the Bible because you know what? We got something better than the Bible. And you, I know that this sounds shocking, y'all. We, 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 we're breaking a, a, a shocking, uh, <laughs> we got something better than the Bible. It called, it's called Jesus. The real Jesus. Uh, and he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. He said, They, they search the scriptures because they in them they think they have the eternal life, but they are they which tell of me. It's got to be all about Jesus. And when we give them, and that, that's why it's been so wonderful what we've been given, because we've been given Jesus. We've been given Jesus. Uh, um, uh, let me let me let me take a moment, uh, a moment of distinct um. Uh, just make a distinct note right here. Uh, Bishop M.A. Hunt is uh, the absolute um, most knowledgeable person I've ever seen with that Bible. Uh, I just never seen anything like it. And I know you've seen people, they can quote you. I, just, I, I can't, just trust me on this. I I, I, I try not to lie to y'all. I promise I do. I've never seen anything like it. He's the most knowledgeable person with the Bible. But yet he never tried to impress you with his knowledge of the Bible. Instead, he tried to give you Jesus that he found in the Bible and 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 and, and impress you with the love of Jesus. And so it, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing what happens when somebody gives you that example. That's what we're called to minister that same gift or give that same example. Uh, Sister Bella, is Jesus talking about the second coming in the scripture referring to the Jews or, or the rapture? Um, I'm not sure. Um, so. Um, I'm not sure which particular part of the text. Let's see. Hold on. We got somebody in the way. Okay, we met somebody. We got somebody in the way. Okay, they're joining now. Okay. Um, so Jesus is absolutely. He's saying that they're going to think because people. Um, okay. Narrow is the way that lead their lead to salvation, and few there be that find. So people think that they can make up the way. But you cannot have the way without the shepherd. And so in the second coming or when Jesus does come back, when Jesus returns, everybody thinks they got the way. So when he separates, he separates them. He said when he comes back, he'll separate them like sheep from goat. Why would he have to separate them like sheep from goat? Because everybody thinks they got the way. But broad is the way to lead to destruction. Um, um, that means that there's people who think they're on the right path and they're on the path. It's just that not the right path. Only what you do for Jesus is going to last. And so when Jesus comes back, he ain't coming back for nothing short of himself. If it's not Jesus, it's not going to work. If it's not Jesus, it's not going to work. Now, hold on. Give me one second. This All right, y'all forgive me. I'm back. All right, and that's a wonderful question. All right, what we got here. And for the day of the Lord is great and will be a glorious day. Uh, who can endure it? Um, we will be able to stand, who will be able to stand in the face of God's judgment. See, now this is a, is a, so it will be absolutely. And here's why 
Why do they say, I wonder why the Bible tells us that judgment must first begin at the house of God. And then we're talking about this house, this kingdom, this kingdom. And this kingdom just simply means, by definition, it's the place where the king has authority. The place where the king rules are applied is his kingdom. He has providence. providence. He has authority. He has rule. What the king says in his kingdom goes because he's ruler over everything in his kingdom. Uh, uh, so when we are operating now in that kind of understanding, um, we, 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 we know that, um, that when we operate now, knowing that we want to operate out of Jesus kingdom, um, that when we go into the house or when we meet with them under that grace, we declare to them the kingdom of God is at hand. And so when Jesus calls us back or when he comes back, uh, you won't be able to get ready. And he uh, he talks about that. Uh, uh, he, he says that there'll be some if you own the roof when you come back and you left in the house. Uh, you won't, that's just a, that's just a metaphor. You won't be you won't have time to go back in the house and get it. But what he's saying is, is whatever is there is there and he wants you with him. And so don't worry about what's there. Worry about what he has for you here. And so uh, that's a wonderful. I thank Jesus for that one for the day of the Lord. is Great. It will be a glorious day. You ain't lying. We got, we got anything over on YouTube? That is one. I love that. I love that. So, um, but judgment now is beginning with us. It, it, the reason why it starts with us is because we're judging ourselves to make sure that we are operating out of the kingdom, operating within the kingdom. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if judgment begins with us, we're not called to judge people. You are supposed to be judging yourself. You're supposed to uh, make sure your salvation is sure. Then I got the real stuff that the kingdom dwells within me. And so when they start chopping stuff and coming up with new Bibles and saying, oh, people don't like this and people don't want that. Look, you can't put nobody in and you can't uh, put no push nobody out. But when you know that you know that you got it for yourself. Um. Uh, Paul was very sure about what he had waiting on him. He said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. Therefore, laid up for me. He said, I already, I already know what I did. I've been operating in the kingdom. I've been doing what Jesus said. He said, therefore, lay up for me. I, I ain't got nothing left to do uh, but, uh, but receive my reward. That's how good Jesus has been. You, know? you ain't, when, when you got him, you got him. And now you're, you're called just to simply operate. The same spirit that you have received. The Bible said you ought to walk in. Jesus said, let your light shine before me. That they might see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. That's what we're called to do. Let me get this real quick for y'all. And um, if there's anything else, we're about to close out, y'all. Y'all did wonderful. Thank Jesus for you. Uh, I pray uh, that these little sessions we're having are being a blessing to you. I know they are a blessing to me. I just like the opportunity. And so if, whether you have a question or not, whether you participate or not, uh, I want you to understand you have the opportunity. Uh, the door is open. Uh, Jesus talking about, oh, no, got that, okay. And let's see, uh, give me two seconds and I'm going to have this for you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's go. Let's go with Galatians four. So next week, uh, Jesus will in Galatians chapter number six, uh, verses one. I just need to see how far I want to go with this. Uh, verses one through ten. So just the ten verses. Galatians chapter number six. Somebody write that in the chat for me if you can. Uh, Galatians chapter number six. Uh, verses one through 10. That's going to be our Bible study uh, uh, for this week, our meditation for this week, Jesus will. Galatians chapter six, verses one through 10. Thank Jesus for you. Galatians chapter six, verses one through 10. That's where we're at with it. Uh, I want you, if you would, uh, read it early so you can so you can meditate on it. And then as you'll see, um, as they say, life happens. And as life is happening, as you're watching the news, as you're going about your everyday, you'll see how uh, 
you'll see, you'll find your question. And as you find your questions, I encourage you to write them down. Uh, uh, take a note, uh, put a pen in it, uh, take a picture of it if you, uh, for a reminder, whatever you need to do. So therefore, uh, we can catch it in your real life. Because by the time you get, by the time we get here, if you don't have it written down, you got to recall it. You got to you got to come to the question. But uh, I want to I want to we want to be able to jump right in your real life and put Jesus in your living so that Jesus can be then, um, you know, um, able to meet you right at the, the need that you have in your everyday uh, eating, drinking, living life. Amen. OK. All right. We ain't got nothing else. Let's see. So we got Galatians 6, 1 through 10. Look, I'm giving to you all early. I did right this week. You're going to do right. I want y'all to go ahead and read. It's only 10 verses. I promise you read it because I'm hoping that it, you, you'll read it more than once. And uh, that once you read it more than once, uh, you, you won't have to cross check the scripture with the living event. You'll understand the theme, the thematic, the theme of the, of, of the text and uh, you'll be able to do it that way. All right. Everyone in here, bow your heads with me. We're going to pray real quick. Uh, but Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, we thank you for how you did suffer, how you bled, you died on the cross, you went down the grave, you stayed there three days and three nights, Jesus, on that third day, you rose again with all power in heaven and earth. Jesus, we come today knowing that we need you now more than we ever need you. We thank you for providing us the grace to come to your mantle one more time, to lay our, to, to lay down at the feet of your, uh, your, your throne, declare Jesus that we need you to cover every area, every facet of our lives, all of our weak stuff, all of our broken stuff, everything that ain't been doing right, uh, everything that won't conform, everything that ain't been acting right, Jesus, we turn it over to you, we release it even right now. Now, asking Jesus that you amend it, that your peace uh, resolve it, that you fix it, that you turn it around according to your will, your word, your way. And we thank you for it in advance. But Jesus, we ask that you might use it, that you might be glorified, uh, that somebody might see that you're the God of peace, you're the God of hope, you're the God of grace, you're the God of charity, you're the God of mercy, the God of love, and the God of, of all power. And we thank you right now, Jesus, for using us that you might be glorified, that the kingdom might be elevated, that you might be magnified, and that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And Jesus, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We call it all done and settled in you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody glad about Jesus. and not good to us? All right, we got a we still got a few more out there. We um um we need to uh we got a couple more minutes. I think I got a, I got a little bit of a, a time a time uh, thing on between the uh I got a little bit of a time thing between um This uh, my clock and the, and the uh, my uh, phone, my phone and my computer. So it's a little bit of a delay. So I guess I guess if we if we are a little bit early, we'll go ahead and wrap up a little bit early. And I thank Jesus for y'all in advance. Uh, remember, I love you, but Jesus, he love you best. You don't got to worry about tomorrow because Jesus is with you today. I want you to have a beautiful night in Jesus. I thank Jesus for y'all. I love you in Jesus' name.